Jesus replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we're back in the Gospel of Mark. As a reminder, the, the lessons, the Gospels we read in church, are distributed over a three-year period. In year A, we read primarily from Matthew. In year B, primarily from Mark. In year C, primarily from Luke. And John gets smattered in between, which explains why even though we're in year B this year, over the last several weeks through Easter and Pentecost and Trinity Sunday, we heard from the Gospel of John. And now, the second Sunday after Pentecost, we've returned to Mark, back to home base, so to speak. There is something home-like about the Gospel of Mark, likely the first Gospel written. It's sort of a starting place. Looking around today, I also think there's definitely something that feels particularly home-like. The altar frontal and the chapel appointments we use here at St. Michael's for the season after Pentecost are out for the first time this year. The hill country plants and animals give us a particular sense of place, this place. And the stained glass windows, beautiful all year round, are particularly suited to this season, both the season and the ch of the church and the ecological season, spring really turning into full summer. Do you feel a sense of coming home? particularly now that not everyone in the congregation is wearing a mask and we don't have any roped off pews, doesn't sitting in this space offer a sense of rest and relaxation? The church season that we're in now is called the season after Pentecost. It's also sometimes called ordinary time. I think after the extraordinary year we've had, it's nice to be faced with some ordinary. In our gospel today, back in Mark, in chapter 3, back near the beginnings of Jesus' ministry, Jesus has also gone home. I wonder if he was hoping for a sense of rest and relaxation. I wonder if he was hoping for some ordinary time. The gospel text today started at verse 20. The way it's printed in the bulletin, it makes it look, look as though the sentence starts there, but... Verse 20 actually begins halfway through a sentence. The second half of verse 19, which we didn't read, and then into verse 20, goes like this. Then he went home, and the crowd came together again so that they could not even eat. A geographical review of Jesus' whereabouts in the Gospel of Mark up to this point goes like this. Jordan River, Wilderness, Sea of Galilee, Capernaum, throughout Galilee, out in the country, Capernaum again, grain fields, beside the sea, up a mountain, and now home. The text doesn't explicitly say where home is. Are we talking about Nazareth, where Jesus is from, and where presumably his family lives, which makes make sense as his family shows up in today's text? Or are we talking about Capernaum at Peter's house, which Jesus seems to have made his home base for his ministry. Is this the home where he grew up or the home that he chose? Either way, this visit home doesn't seem to be particularly restful or peaceful or ordinary. His family arrives and they try to restrain him, physically tie him up to keep him from doing what he's been doing. We can put a positive spin on this Jesus is doing something dangerous. He's going to get himself killed. His family, who loves him, want to protect him from himself. We can understand their motivation a little bit and sympathize with them. But we can also really sympathize with Jesus, his family, who we might suppose know him better than anyone else, whose support he could really use as a source of strength, is actively working against him actively working to shut him down. That's got to hurt. It's worth noting here that this is the first time in the Gospel of Mark that Jesus' family is mentioned in any way. Remember, Mark doesn't have a birth narrative. 
There's no story of Mary and Joseph, no angels, no shepherds, no Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. Instead, Mark jumps in with Jesus' baptism. Mark isn't as concerned with who Jesus' people are or where Jesus came from, although he does name Nazareth as Jesus' origin. Compared to the other Gospels, the Gospel of Mark is also hardest on the people Jesus is closest to. The disciples are often portrayed as missing the point or failing altogether. So while the attitude of Jesus' family toward Jesus seems harsh, I mean, do they not know him at all? It is consistent with the gospel. For Mark, Jesus' biological family just isn't that important. Jesus' biological family isn't really what the story of Jesus is about. Mark's story of Jesus is about Jesus announcing and ushering in the kingdom of God. And in the kingdom of God, all who do God's will are brother and sister and mother. In today's gospel text, it seems like Jesus is ignoring his family at best or being deliberately disrespectful at worst. But that's not the whole picture. Instead, he's offering attention and respect to a larger family. Jesus' family is so much more than just a few people who share his genes. Family is about discipleship, and that is good news. In God's kingdom, we aren't limited by who we're related to. And that's not to say we aren't related to wonderful people. I dearly love my relatives, my own parents, siblings, my children. I'm really excited to be able to spend more time with them this summer. But we are part of a much, much bigger family. Because as much as we're raised by and shaped by our own parents, we've also been raised and shaped by the power of the Holy Spirit acting in our lives. And as much as we've learned from and been influenced by our brothers and sisters and our families of origin, we continue to learn from and be influenced by our brothers and sisters in faith. In our baptism, we become children of God the Father, sealed by the power of the Holy Spirit, marked as Christ's own forever. We aren't limited by our families of origin, and even more importantly, God isn't limited by us. Both Jesus' family and the scribes in this story attempted to limit his actions, tried to bind him and hold him back. Meanwhile, Jesus was working to bind up the forces of evil so that anyone and everyone being held by those forces could be released. The eternal sin that Jesus talks about, blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, is about trying to limit and reject the work of the Spirit in the world. Being part of God's family means being open to the ways that the Holy Spirit operates, even if those ways sometimes surprise us. Being part of God's family means being inclusive and open to others. Being part of God's family means offering God's love to everyone, whether or not we share genes, whether or not we share interests or tastes, whether or not we share opinions or perspectives. Who are my mother and my brothers? Friends, you are, and I'm yours. In this gospel about home and family, there's an invitation to relationship and rest. And that's what we long for when we think about going home. We have assurance of both of those things, secure in the knowledge that we are loved by God, and there is no greater safety than within God's house eternal in the heavens. Thanks be to God.